Hi guys, this is Wirehead King, and today I'm just going, uh, uh, yeah, doing a quick tutorial on how to create scratches in Blender 2.59. Okay, so um, as you can see, I've got a simple scene set up. I've got a little speed limit sign, and it's attached to a pole. And uh, this pole, if you zoom in, has got some scratches on. The closer you get, the clearer they are. But also, if you zoom in too far, they get kind of low resolution and look horrible. Um, but you know, if we were to just zoom out a bit, uh, or render it even, then those scratches look good again. Although, you can't really see them too well on the render. Um, that just needs, you know, so it just needs a bit of adjusting, really. But generally, you get the idea. Okay, so let's just start a new Blender file to uh, do that. And we're not going to do the sign or anything like that, we're just going to work on the pole. Alright, so um, let's get a cylinder. Uh, give it about, in fact, let's double its vertices, so times two, that equals 64. Let's make this nice and tall, scale it down a bit, taller again, scale it down. I'm just using a tiny little pole, basically, that's going to, look, let's just make it slightly bigger. Okay, so, um, alright, so what we want to do is to get some nice outdoor lighting, because I assume this will be outdoors, I don't know why it would be indoors, uh, to sort of get it right without having to render it loads of times. What you can do is just come down here and choose textured, and now we've got a nice textured pole. And if we just hit smooth, then uh, that just makes it a lot smoother, like it would be. But um, in fact, in fact, yeah, let's just work with this now. Uh, I'll show you some other settings later that let you sh see text, like all the textures and stuff like that. All right, so um, delete the uh, s um, default light, add a sunlight, bring it out, rotate it a bit. Hang on. Go into top view. In fact, no, let's not yet. Front view, rotate it kind of, and then bring it up. Then, you know, I think things work best if th uh, you're using a light that doesn't directly hit the thing that you is supposed to be aiming at. You know, just put it off somewhere around there. And it looks practically the same. In fact, it just looks, I uh, no, no, if you rotate it, it sort of looks a bit different, but you know. Just leave it about there, and that should be fine and set the energy to 1.5 and make it a slightly yellow your yellowy color in fact that's about that's a bit too yellow so let's just make it just very slightly onto the yellowy side and that looks about right okay so now i'm going to add uh, i think a hemi would be good for something like this just bring it out to the side here like that rotate it into the shape and uh, make it a du ooh a very darkish blue color like that alright so I'm now also going to just rotate this into the opposite direction of the sun and what this is doing is it's basically simulating the light coming down from the sky okay however this looks really fake um, well because it just does and if we were to start adding you know like uh, textures in the materials and stuff they sometimes don't really show up too well so what I'm going to do is under display, uh, by pressing N you can bring up the side menu, set the shading from multi texture to GLSL, and uh, you can now see how it would look if it was rendered, and this is this just looks stupid, so let's just make that a bit darker, like that, and uh, let's just bring it directly on top, and that did nothing. Um, but yeah, you get the idea, so uh, yep. Uh, let's get on to adding textures. So, uh, okay, so the first thing I want to do is make a new tech uh, material for this. Call it something like pole, and uh, just give it kind of like a grey colour, you know, like you should, because um, that's what you do when you're doing an animation. Don't leave everything the default colour. Just leave it something, or well, you leave the diffuse at something kind of similar to what it would look like rendered. So you know, you can sort of see things a bit easier and stuff. Anyway, let's just. Um, get on with it then. So I'm going to get rid of a lot of the specularity because it's not really shiny, it's been out in the weather loads, you know, it's, it, I've used a, I've got a galvanized metal texture that's not ever shiny and uh, yeah, I'm just going to bring down the hardness though so it's kind of like a soft specularity like that and um, yeah, so that should be good for that. Okay, so now let's give it materials and stuff like that. So um, I found that when you uh, try and preview something like you would rendered in this just in object view for some reason I don't know if it's the same with every texture but 
when I tried to give uh, this a tubed texture, so tube mapping, it didn't quite show up too well, so I decided to UV map it on. So that's what I'm going to do today. So what you do is you simply just select, or go into edit mode by pressing tab, alt, and right, well hold alt and right click this top, um, you know, this top ring, so just select one uh, sort of edge in the middle, and it should select the entire thing. And do the same at the bottom, so you got, uh, oh hang on, you might want to add some. Let's just add a loop cut going right in the middle first, because um, when I made my scene, it was slightly different. I used subsurf modifiers to give it this high definitionness, if that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, you're going to need to add a loop cut like that. So, um, alright, so once you've done that, you're going to also want to just select one edge loop going down the middle by selecting one of these um, vertical edges. I'm trying to get this. Oh my goodness, where? Okay. Uh, stop selecting the ones behind it. Hang on. Um, oops. Hang on. There we go. Okay, so now we've got those lots of vertices. They will, they, oh yeah, if you hold shift, you can select more than one vertice at all times. Uh, well, you know, if you get the idea. And um, Okay, so if you press Ctrl-E and tick, uh, choose Mark Scene, what that should then do is... Hang on, have I got this, why have I got this middle vertice selector? I should not have that selected. Okay, just uh, press Ctrl-E and choose Clear Scene for a second and just deselect these sort of center vertices there. Now press it, so control E, mark C. And so now, if we were to open up a new sort of window by just clicking on this weird, well these little lines in the corner, and just drag it outwards like this, you can uh, make a new little window. Set this to UV image editor, go to image, open image, desktop, uh, well go to an image that you saved, uh, mine is uh, scratches tutorial, and metal. Okay, so once we open that, for some it's gonna uh, wipe for some reason. Press U on this pole and choose unwrap. And now that's just unwrapped uh, the UV things, and they're now little islands. Well, that's a technical term anyway. You might not want to call them islands, but to me that just looks like two eyes and some weird mouth. Anyway, so let's just um, so uh, what you can do is just select any vertice in these two wheels and press Control L and that will just select uh, all of them uh, everything connected to those press G and Y and just bring this out of the uh, thing and you're probably wondering why I'm doing that basically this image just repeats everywhere and because this is a seamless uh, image or tiled image then this really doesn't matter too much so yeah and that also means that if we were to just um, select all of these we can just scale it up on the y-axis and make it go further than the actual image itself without worrying of weird seams everywhere uh, if you get the idea although there will in fact, actually no I don't think there will be a seam at either side of these unless they've uh, been well been made bigger or smaller so that they aren't really not right at the edge anyway okay so I'm just gonna make this a lot uh, or these a lot taller so about there that, that should do it and uh, that's just because we've got quite a tall object and we don't want the textures to look all squished and oh, no, it'll be stretched if it's too small if that makes sense so yeah uh, now if I press shift space to come out of full screen then we've now UV mapped this okay so let's just view textured again and I think we should save just in case um, let's go with this I don't know file Okay, um, alright, so now we're going to add the material. So if we give this a new texture, and then make it an image or a movie, go to open, select metal, because that's the texture that we're going to be using. As you can see, it's gone all stretched here, nice and flat up here. Let's just see if tubed will work. Won't, though. Nope, it doesn't, see. Okay, so it sets back to flat, go from coordinates, from generated to UV, and uh, there is a small seam there, but we can just rotate this by 90 degrees to put that at the back. And you can see now we've got this nice galvanized metal thing. I might just uh, go into the UV image editor again and just make it slightly taller. And just need to bring these eyes, uh, not eyes, circles. I called them eyes from earlier. R uh, just up a bit. And 
you can actually see that it's changing in the uh, uh, 3D viewport in real time as I do this. So now I'm actually making it a bit too squished. So about there it should be fine. Um, you might want to look up reference images of galvanized poles. Um, but yeah. Oh yeah, uh, I got my textures. I got the galvanized texture from cgtextures.com and uh, I got the scratches texture from Google Images and the cyan texture from earlier I made myself in Photoshop because that's quite an easy thing to make but anyway so um yep that's the galvanized texture that I wanted and yep that's looking fine so uh, now let's save that again and uh, yeah um, now time to do the thing that this tutorial is about we've been talking for about uh, 10 minutes and we haven't actually got to any scratches yet so um, now what we're going to do is we're going to call this call like that, or call whatever you want to call it. Add a new texture, call this scratch. So scratches, if you want to be, you know, uh, if it's just like loads of scratches, which mine is. So we're going to change it to image or movie again. Choose the scratches uh, texture that I've got, and wait for it to work. Now, as you can see, um, let's just effect. No, that's not really helping. Uh, but as you can probably see that this is quite bad for scratches, you know, it's got this weird greeny, bluey thing. But we're going to adjust that quite simply to make the scratches appear and just the scratches. Alright, so uh, first of all, I just want to change it from um, uh, the mapping to UV again. So you can just uh, do that, 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 because it's just the same thing, really. And, um, okay, so don't worry that there's uh, these little um, seams here, or uh, don't worry that it's repeating, basically, because, you know, well, you might want to worry that it's repeating, you might want to, you know, be a bit more clever and get a taller texture or something like that, but uh, it really shouldn't matter too much. Or you might want to, in fact, yeah, you want tall textures for everything, for the UV mapping. But anyway, um, I don't really care much about that for the moment, seeing as this is just a tutorial. Okay, so, um... Just zoom in on these scratches here, which is where we're going to want it to be, and just going to want to adjust uh, the brightness and contrast in the texture panel here, and that's not actually affecting a thing on this. I didn't think it would because I didn't really bother with it when I was making my little example scene. Scene, not scene. Um, okay, so just set it to about there. That's fine and uh, under influence which is here uh, just gets back to how I usually use it uh, untick color and uh, then tick geometry uh, well, under geometry tick normal um, tick RGB to intensity as well and then uh, as you can see we've got these big nasty scratches all over our pole and we don't want that because you know this looks like someone has been spending all their life stabbing and prodding and you know doing all sorts of stuff to this pole um, but you know we just want gentle scratches you know where um, I don't know like where some murderer was sharpening his knife for about you know just like you know just one little brush on it but you know there's a lot of murderers in the area where this is from so um, you know there's quite a few scratches from but anyway so um, oh wait a second you have to be quite tall to have manage to get your arm to just be there casually anyway so um basically there's going to be scratches and you know this could be anything where the scratches are on so let's just adjust the normal basically if it's a, a plus number so uh, in fact, if it's a minus number let's start with that then this bump map goes outwards so you know little bumps on the uh, thing but if it's a number that's not a uh, minus so like a, a plus number then it should go inwards um, or a negative number should I say that's instead of minus number anyway um, so yeah oh uh, sometimes for example if I had to go into edit mode and just go down to where would it be uh, uh, yeah normals if you to choose flip direction then uh, or oh, everything looks retarded now but you know these will now be coming outwards even though it's on a minus because it basically um, uses the normals to calculate stuff and yeah so uh, okay I think that's um, um, just checking if this looks like someone is 
Um, I think I've gone a bit too harsh on the uh, normal. So as you said, it's to 0 0.05 or something very small like that because, oops, uh, you don't look at something just go that has been scratched unless it's like a disc or something or something that's obviously been scratched. But you know you can't just look at something from quite a distance ago that's been scratched. You have to sort of you know get up closer to it. Um, and yeah, you can sort of use that in Blender as well to sort of you know, tell. But basically, what I'm saying is, don't make the scratches too deep or anything, because um, you know we don't want it to be too deep because that'd just be stupid. But you know, the scratches really aren't that deep. You know, they make just a small kind of um, what what would you call it? Like a they make a small um, uh, sort of. I guess physical prints where they were. That's probably a really stupid way to call it, but you know. I think oh dents. They make small dents where um you know, they've been and stuff, but uh you know, they're literally if you were to put your hand over a scratch, like as I say on a disc or something, it will literally feel like there is no difference at all. But on metal and stuff, then um, you know, it's you know, you probably will feel it slightly. But I don't see why you'd be rubbing your hand up and down metal. So that'd just be kind of weird. Uh, I mean, you get the idea. So I've done these scratches and zoomed in. They look quite good. And rendered, I'm hoping they look good as well. Uh, okay, you can barely see them rendered. But you get the idea. So that's how to make scratches. You can put this on anything, like a box, someone's face. That might work. Uh, but you're going to need to, you know, think about that one. Because that, that would be quite weird to make it look good at the same time. Um, uh, or any basically anything that you can put scratches on, you may as well put it on, unless you don't want to. But anyway, so you get the idea. That's how to make scratches. If you were wondering how to, uh, so yeah, this has been Whitehead King um, making scratches. Comment, rate, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, visit my website. All that stuff you can do is in the description. Um, and yeah, uh, so yeah, thanks for watching and goodbye.